In this video, I'll be spending another 100 days in Pixelmon on Anubis MC. Here are my goals. First, defeat an ultimate boss Pokemon. Second, explore and take on all 18 gyms. And third, defeat James and his powerful team of legendaries. Alright, so I joined the server and there were a couple of realms to choose from. I right clicked the compass and I just picked Oasis. Once I entered, I had to choose a starter. Also, if you want to play, check out the link below the video to help you get on the server. If you already have Pixelmon, feel free to join using the IP. Anyways, after careful consideration, I picked the best starter of all time, which was none other than a frog. I explored the server and in my inventory I had all these items that looked like they would be useful. While exploring, I visited the crates and apparently you can get legendary rewards? The floating letters told me to type in slash vote and when I did, a bunch of shiny master balls appeared. As I say that, somebody flexed an Articuno right in front of me. That was terrifying, but what terrified me even more was realizing that only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed, so if you like to see more of this content, you know what to do. Anyway, the first crate I checked out had Mega Evolved Pokemon, and I wanted to steal them so badly. The next crate had custom textured legendaries, which I didn't even know was possible. And the last crate I checked out was the shiny crate, and I personally liked it a lot since I love shinies. Afterwards, I looked at the size of my Froakie and was shocked at how tiny he was, but I guess he is just a frog. I then voted for the server and it gave me a key to open the vote crate. I waited to see what I would get and I ended up winning $10,000, which was probably the last thing I wanted, mainly because I just wanted a legendary. However, I voted again and got another key. I headed to the crate and hoped for something good. And to my surprise, I was lucky enough to land on a Zapdos. In less than 5 minutes of playing, I somehow got a legendary. It couldn't possibly get better than this. But as I say that, I opened up another crate and won a shiny key. I opened the shiny crate, and just like that, I got a shiny Rowlet. Now, I have two starters on the team. I was already having a good time, and I just wanted to explore more. If you ask me, I think I had a pretty good start. For the rest of the day, I just admired the structures around spawn. The next morning, I visited this huge building with a cute little Eevee. I clicked on him and he told me what Eevees are and they basically raise your Pokemon stats. So I guess this is where you would train for that. I actually did some digging online and found a site that tells you what Eevees to train for, which I'll leave below the video. Now the book told me that if you type in slash EVS and the slot number of your Pokemon, you can check their EVs, which is pretty neat. I thought to give this a try, and my Pokemon leveled up at lightning speed. In less than 5 minutes, my Froakie evolved into Frogadier, and my Rowlet evolved into Dartrix. Things were moving so fast, and I felt like I needed to get out of spawn for a breather. For that, someone said Slash RTP would teleport me to the outside world. And man, was that a mistake. It was raining so hard. Now my head's gonna get all wet. I needed shelter to dry up, so I picked the spot by the river to start my base. There was a shovel in my inventory that placed diamond blocks in the ground and allowed me to claim my territory. I began building my home and found that there was a shop that sold a bunch of different blocks that I could use for my house. I got to work and I was excited to get this little home built. I decided that this would be the first building for Spicy Town. It'd be awesome for viewers to come visit and build here. However, only cool people are allowed to come to the party with slash warp spicy town. Oh, and if you want your home next to mine, just type slash set home. Soon, I browsed through the shop again and found the token shop. Apparently I had tokens, a lot of them in fact, so I thought I'd just get a mega crate key. I went back to spawn and after rolling, I ended up getting a mega Obama snow. I was so happy because I always thought he was one of the coolest Pokemon in Pokemon Diamond. Plus he's level 100, which is awesome. When I voted again, I actually got my first Master Ball, which put me in complete shock. I did receive another crate key, and when I went to open some crates, I ended up getting an Articuno. I rolled again, and I got another Master Ball. My luck is insane. Nobody will want to mess with me now, since I have two legendaries on my team. Pretty soon, I thought about doing a bit of mining for some valuables, and found that the server had just what I needed. I typed slash warps and there were 5 different warps to choose from and the mines warp had 5 different mines. 
I picked the ore mine and there was this huge glowstone box filled with ores of all kinds. Redstone, diamonds, and new ores like crystal and bauxite. In the middle of mining, I heard the big achievement sound and I unlocked an ability called Miner's Madness. I tried to figure out what that was in the skills menu and discovered that I had a bunch of other skills. I checked my mining skill and it said the ability basically allowed me to mine super fast for a period of time. It was awesome to use, and it looked a little funny as well. After mining a bunch of ores, there was an ore man that let me sell all my ores for money. After becoming rich, I left the mine and checked out the battle pass on the server. Apparently, just by playing on the server, I received rewards. At level 1, I earned $10,000. At level 5, I received an EXP share. And at level 7, I received an additional $25,000. With this many rewards, I felt like I was flexing harder than this Machoke. That mine warp served me well, so I wanted to check out the other ones like the biome warps. I visited the Mesa, my favorite biome since I love terracotta blocks, I think they're so fun to build with, and I even went to the end, my not so favorite biome since I despise Enderman. Thank god there weren't any here, but there was a common boss which was insanely high leveled since my Obama Snow was level 100. I defeated it though and got a few items, but had to go back to spawn to heal up. I then explored the extreme hills and found someone's base close by. I tried sealing some apricorns, but obviously I couldn't. I then traveled to the ice mountains and found an abandoned Poke Center in the middle of nowhere, but the fact that it was broken down made it look quite interesting and mysterious. Lastly, I traveled to the good old desert and found a cool looking entrance to someone's base. I invaded the base and they had the actual grass from the Pokemon game in their yard. The sign on the fence gave me a warning to not enter, saying it was only for trained professionals. I took that as my cue to break in and I immediately encountered the guard snake. This reminded me of how much I hated the grass in Pokemon games. I went back to spawn and claimed more rewards for my battle pass and my level 11 reward was 15 master balls. It just felt insane to have 17 of them. I felt like the most powerful man on the server. Although, I can't really claim that title since I haven't even taken on a gym yet. So, I figured it was time to take one on. This gym had rules and a level cap of 20, which made me feel relieved since my Frogadier was not even close to my legendaries. I also like that I got to choose which Pokemon to battle with. I feel like that just makes it easier to pick counters if I battle them again. I eventually fought the gym leader named Steve and it was possibly the most dreadful experience I've ever had in Pixelmon. I could barely do any damage to her Pokemon and whenever I did, they would always heal back up with leftovers. I was defeated and I walked the walk of shame. I came back and she brought out her Sylveon who was even more annoying. Not only did he heal up with leftovers, but he constantly used protect throughout the battle. She beat me once again and I needed to try something different. Before I headed back, I opened up some crates and got an Arceus. I opened up another one and got an EXP all. Now all my Pokemon can level up at the same time. I can't tell you how much I love these crates. I was so happy to have this man on my team. When I came back to spawn, Mike Wazowski looked like he needed my attention. He wanted to trade with me to evolve his Pokemon and I said sure. We traded and his Kadabra evolved. And boy was I happy, I just got a free Alkazam. Nah, I'm just kidding. I gave it back to him and he seemed pretty happy about that. I couldn't do it. He just had such a cute skin. Anyway, I forgot to mention that my Zapdos didn't have any moves that actually did damage. So in the middle of the crates, I entered the room with all the move tutors. With the cost of 5 diamonds, I taught my Zapdos Thunderbolt. My new plan in defeating the fairy gym leader was simple and that was just to fight her with my legendaries. I was about to go to the gym, but there was an event going on so I went to check it out. We were crammed in this room, waiting to be freed, and let's just say it got a little too crowded in here. The game was hide and seek, and once we were freed, I had no idea where to hide. I camped in this one house, and I crouched in the corner, terrified. I did however meet someone here, who I thought would blow my cover, but they actually wanted me to follow them. And my god was this person a genius. They found a secret room, hidden in a picture frame. We camped here for quite a while, and she kept complaining how I wasn't sneaking but I was just too busy laughing at the glasses on her TNT face. We would sometimes leave the hiding place to see if any seekers were around, but they just couldn't find us. I was getting impatient though, so I thought it'd be funny to leak our cords in chat, and soon enough, the upper management found us. I tried running away, but he caught me. Anyway, I came back to the fairy gym and was confident that I would win this time. 
As I battled the leader, my plan was working. My Arceus was definitely putting in the work, my Zapdos was dealing a good amount of damage, and last but not least, my Articuno with his magic helped finish off the rest and earn me a pixie plate and the relic badge. I was excited for that, but as I logged in the next day, the server had some major changes, like this brand new hub. I spent a lot of time looking at these updates. They now had daily quests, rewards for completing the Pokédex, and ranks which I guess you can unlock by just playing. There was also a brand new and beautiful spawn area, along with a completely different crate section. I actually got an armor fossil, which was perfect timing since I was about to head out and find one myself. Before I dissolved the fossil, I warped to this place called the Battle Towers. I vaguely remember this from the games, but I assume it's where you fight a lot of trainers. I went to the green tower, which is supposed to be the easy tower, and I did well for the most part. I was able to take down a lot of the trainer's Pokemon and got him down to his last one, but his gloom beat me with less than an inch of health left. I was a little disappointed, so I thought to cheer myself up by buying a fossil machine from the shop and waiting for my fossil to revive. And once I had shield on in my party, I was a lot happier. Look how adorable he is. Later, I checked out the kits in the new Poke menu. I had a lot of kits to claim, mainly because of my rank, and the champion kit actually gave me the Ultra Beast, Buzzwool. When I saw how massive this guy's deltoids were, I completely forgot about Sheldon, or whatever that fossil's name was. I'd much rather have the Crimson Chin on my team. Soon after, I explored the new spawn and found a man that could reteach my legendaries their old moves. I had no idea that they had so many good moves that they could learn. Thanks, Pops. And for my other Pokemon, I got a bunch of rare candies from the kits to give to them that would boost their levels in no time. This would really help out Buzzwool, who was only level 5 when I got him. But he wasn't the only one I was giving sweets to. I gave enough to my Frogadier to evolve him into Greninja, who was now able to learn his best move, Water Shuriken. And who apparently grew 5 times the size of his previous form. I also gave some to Dartrix, which evolved him into Decidueye. This guy did not look like someone you'd want to steal lunch money from. All jokes aside, I was just thrilled to have this team of really awesome Pokemon and a humongous bug who likes to keep hurting himself. Seeing my team like that made me confident enough to step into the battle frontier. But I was never more wrong in my entire life. The first guy I had to battle was named James, and James was a man who hoarded all of the coolest Pokemon you could think of. Not only that, they were also insanely powerful, and my team did not stand a chance against him. My Arceus was able to do some damage, but not a whole lot. His Pokemon were basically Pitbulls compared to my Chihuahuas. I mean, just look at his Mewtwo, he looks like the kid form of Majin Buu. After a not so surprising defeat, I left the frontier and decided to work on filling up my Pokedex. I wanted to get as much of it completed to get my hands on these rewards. I had a ton of Ultra Balls and just threw them at any Pokemon in sight. I also felt like I could use this time to level up my lower level Pokemon. As I looked through the Pokedex, an Entei spawned near me. I started panicking since this biome was huge and I thought that he could despawn at any second. That's probably the worst feeling ever in Pokemon. Luckily, this biome didn't have any trees that would make it harder to find him. After a relatively quick search, I found him. Not gonna lie, I was sweating a little bit. I threw one of my Master Brawls at him and waited for the ding. I got a congratulations message from the server and a whole bunch of achievements. I kept him on my team instead of in the PC since I wanted a fire type and the fact that legendaries have the best stats. I also needed to make sure he knew actual fire moves like Lava Plume. Suicune was my favorite of the Beast Trio growing up, but now that this fool is on my team, he has been replaced. Moving on, I spent a lot of time catching as many Pokemon as I possibly could. As I did that, I spotted a legendary boss chilling next to this village, and the way he came at me looked like he wanted to fight. I had four powerful legendaries, a 7'10 Ultra Beast, and a frog that uses its tongue as a scarf, all defeated by this one sheep. I healed my squad and thought I'd give it another go, maybe try something different. But when I came out of the Poke Center, another one spawned nearby. I thought this one could be lower leveled, maybe he might miss a few attacks, but he one shot all of my Pokemon. Being defeated like that made me more determined to beat these bosses, but at the same time I kinda just wanted to crawl in a hole. I did however find a level 80 Pidgey which I was actually able to beat, but then I ran to Kangaskhan and was close to beating him but still lost. I needed my Pokemon to stand their ground in battles, so I decided to visit the Eevee Center, and this place looked completely different. 
They had all sorts of items on the walls that you could buy, such as lucky eggs. I went ahead and grabbed one for 5k and was glad I did because this would definitely help with grinding levels in the wild. After this battle, I found the time space altar. I thought it was cool seeing its broken pillars and I also had no idea that you could find one in the overworld. Anyway, I continued adding more Pokemon to the decks by fighting more battles. I took a peek at the decks and I wasn't even close to getting the first reward. Soon after, I headed to the desert for a change of scenery and found a temple. And right by the temple, I found an epic boss. This guy was a lot easier to fight than the previous bosses. Plus it only took one Pokemon to beat him. Upon defeat, he dropped tons of items. One being a keystone that I put on as a band. I felt extremely satisfied after that boss fight. Now that I have that keystone, I can finally show you guys what Mega Abomasino looks like. To be honest, I haven't seen a lot of Mega Ball Pokemon, but as of right now, I'd say this is my second favorite. Let me know in the comments which Pokemon you think has the best Mega form. After that, I started claiming some of my kits and I ran into a Mega Gengar right by my house. It actually looked a lot like my Mega Abomasino. It was level 130 and took my Pokemon down with ease, but Arceus proved to be the best match for it. If he killed Arceus, I knew I'd be done for, so I made sure to keep healing him with Recover. My Arceus had a move called Future Sight, which was powerful enough to even damage a Pokemon that had 60 more levels on him. It felt like Arceus was unstoppable, and he really was just a one-man team. I even got his HP back up to full, but after one more Future Sight, the Gengar died and took Arceus down with him. Although, he did give some items in return. After that encounter, I returned back to my windowless home and checked my PC to find two new Pokemon. One came from the kits, and the Charizard was gifted to me by a friend. And my god, was this the best gift ever. I couldn't believe that I had a level 100 shiny Charizard on my team. Just staring at him made me forget all about my other fire type. Not only that, I got the Stonejourner from my champion kit. I had no clue what the heck this thing was, but it looked adorable. I took out Charizard and got on his back. It definitely brought back some good memories from my first 100 days, reminding me how terrible he is at flying. But I was obviously happy to have him on the team. Also, I've been changing my team throughout this whole video, but hopefully, probably not, I'll be sticking with these fine gentlemen for the rest. Now, I've been thinking a lot about my terrible loss with the Battle Frontier. So, I decided that I would train my Pokemon to their max fighting potential. By typing in slash warp DEV, I teleported to the Donor EV Training Center, which kind of reminded me of Hogwarts. I checked out the welcome message, and my takeaway from it was that it was easier and more efficient to train here than the regular one. There are three yields for each stat that you want to train your Pokemon for. The first yield are the easy trainers, the second are medium, and the third are the hardest trainers. I try to fight the hard trainers since they give a lot of experience to my Pokemon. I guess the small yields are better if you just want your EVs maxed out the quickest. So the stat I wanted to max all my Pokemon in was speed because as the saying goes, he who strikes first wins. While I was training Greninja, he learned Extra Sensory, which I was glad for since it's one of the best moves on him. Now, I did run into a problem of not being able to max out a stat because of other stats. So for that, I used specific berries to lower them, like this Kelpsy berry that lowered attack. While I did that, a message popped up saying a super crate spawned. I checked the rewards and I knew that I definitely wanted to find this. I immediately hopped on Charizard and we flew away. I needed to make sure I was the first one to get there. I was beginning to feel desperate to find this thing, so I played a little dirty and told people in chat that I already found it. And it worked! Somebody believed me! But that was just one person, so I'm worried about the rest of the people. It was taking forever to find this crate, since it was almost 6,000 blocks away. It would be really embarrassing to have said that in chat and not find the crate. But I traveled across the land, I searched pretty far and wide, and found the location of the super crate. The Y cord was below ground level, so I kept digging but couldn't find it. I kept mining but found nothing. I guess that's karma for what I said in chat. I planked up and got out of there. Moments later, I was furious when I saw someone claim it in chat. I tried to not let that bug me, so I headed back to the Eevee Center to continue training. An interesting thing about the Eevee Center is that it's a pretty good way to fill up your Pokédex, since there's so many trainers with a variety of Pokémon. It's one of my favorite things about this place, seeing all these different Pokémon in such a confined area. Anyway, I finished leveling up the Eevees for my whole team and decided to stay here for a bit to level up my Pokémon even further, trying to get them all around the same level. And as I did that, I came across a Pokémon I've never seen before. 
For a moment, I stood in shock because I thought the head of that trainer was the head of the Pokemon. But then he turned around and I felt pretty stupid. To be honest, I don't know what I was thinking that day. However, there are some strange Pokemon in this game. The weirdest one I've ever seen was a floating sword. Let me know in the comments the strangest Pokemon you've ever encountered. Anyway, I was grinding levels for Greninja and realized he gained levels in a matter of seconds. You might think it's boring to be constantly one-shotting Pokemon, but honestly, I was having a blast and felt like I could do this all day. I only intended to train for a little bit, but then I thought why not just get them all to level 100? I had a lot of rare candies from my kits, so I decided to give them to Buzzwall. As he leveled up, he learned some really good moves like Focus Punch. Now, my moveset for him was probably the worst moveset you'll ever see in Pokemon, with no status effects or heals, but I can always get TMs and reteach him moves. After feeding him a ton of rare candies, I finally got him to level 100. This made me want my whole team to be level 100, and for that, I came to this place called the Level Grinder. I came inside and found three trainers, all level 100. They fought with these blissies that use the move Healing Wish to make themselves faint so that you can gain XP. Within just a couple of minutes, I got my Greninja, my companion since day 1, all the way up to his max level. After Greninja, I came back to the level grinder, trained the rest of my Pokemon, and eventually got my 3 legendaries maxed out as well. Now that my team was maxed out, I felt like I could take on the whole world. My Pokemon were strong, but they can be even stronger with this new feature I found called the Poke Builder. I was shocked to find out you can change your Pokemon's IVs, you can make your Pokemon shiny, and you can change their growth to whatever size you want them to be. You needed tokens, and I used mine to change my Pokemon's nature, which can boost their stats. For my Greninja, I gave him a timid nature. The next morning when I voted for the server, I got another fossil, which was a sale fossil for Amora. I've never heard of that fossil before, so I was curious to see what the Pokemon was like. I would guess that it's a water or ice type since it's a sale fossil, but I guess I'll just have to wait and see. I did some organizing and then found a little blue dinosaur in the machine. This guy was easily the cutest fossil Pokemon I've ever seen. He was also super small. I felt like I could just pick him up and chuck him over a mountain. I gotta be careful where I place him though. Buzzwole could end his career with his long pointy legs. Moving forward, now that all my Pokemon are maxed out, I thought it was time to start taking on the new gyms. The first gym I decided to go to was the Bug Gym. At first, I wondered why there were only two trainers here. Usually gyms have dozens. I took on the NPC tester who clearly did not have any bug type Pokemon, but had a really cool Charizard though. After getting beat to the pulp, I then decided it would be a good idea to take on the level 100 NPC leader. I learned that you can only have 3 Pokemon, and I did pretty well with my 3 against him, but then he pulled out a scissor and mega evolved it. That's when I knew things got serious. He got me down to my last Pokemon, but thankfully my Greninja was able to pull through and help me win against the gym leader. After my victory, I explored around the gym and didn't find a single trainer. I then realized that was just how the gyms worked. In the new update, you now don't have to go through the lackeys to get to the leader, which I'm glad they changed because that would have been too much for 18 gyms. Next gym I went to was the fighting gym, and this place was absolutely beautiful. As I climbed up this long staircase, I noticed that there were cherry blossom trees everywhere. For the NPC battle, I used my Charizard to begin with and he was able to do some decent damage to his opponents. Although, he did end up falling, along with Greninja, which left Buzzwole to do the rest. The only Pokemon he had left to beat was a Lucario, who got him down to 7 HP, but somehow Buzzwole took out all his health in one move, ensuring my victory against the fighting gym. Moments later, I toured around the gym and found these rare Pokemon kind of just sitting in place all over the area. I couldn't battle them or interact with them, so I think they're just cool decorations for the gym. After that, I headed to the flying gym and saw even more awesome Pokemon. And here I thought my Charizard was the coolest shiny. I was definitely wrong about that. Not only that, I tend to believe my Pokemon are a lot stronger than I think they are, but then my Charizard gets taken down by a tiny Gliscor. Also, apparently every gym leader has a Pokemon that can Mega Evolve. Now, that shouldn't worry me too much, but it did make me feel very outclassed. In addition to that, this guy had moves you wouldn't teach to a Charizard like Solar Beam and Weather Ball that defeated my team. I fought him again and he brought out a Pokemon that had arms floating in the air, not even attached to its body. It was so mysterious looking and I didn't really know what to do against it, so I just hoped that my Greninja would carry this. 
and I'm glad I did, because he was able to take out both of them, helping me win against the flying gym. Next gym on the list was the grass gym, and I felt confident about this one since I had a Charizard. I was even up against a Venusaur, so I thought it would take like 2 seconds. But then he killed my Charizard along with Buzzwool, and left my Greninja to deal with the grass types. I came back for round 2, and this Venusaur killed my Charizard again with his poison attacks. I may have lost my fire type, but things started going my way when I brought out Buzzwool. He easily took out the gym leader's first two Pokemon and brought him to his last. The Torterra was quite the pain for Buzzwool, using synthesis over and over again, but my giant bug was able to bring him down, straight up clutching the gym battle for me. I can't believe I trusted a fire breathing lizard over a bug. What was I thinking? Anyway, it was time for the ground gym. Just looking around gave me a feeling that I would really like this place. As I explored this huge gym, an epic boss spawned in the wall next to me and was suffocating. I wanted to end his suffering, but then I remembered that you can't fight wild Pokemon in the gym. I really wish you could though, that would be super fun. In other news, I fought the NPC and it was probably the fastest battle I've had yet. My Buzzwole died instantly, but my Greninja pretty much 1v3'd his Pokemon using Hydro Pump and Water Shuriken. I know it's water versus ground, but I was still impressed. The gym after ground was ice, and after just 5 seconds of being in here, I was already in love with it. As I snooped around, I found some really sick legendaries that looked almost identical, and I spotted Regiice just chilling on an ice block. Now when I took on the leader, she pulled out a Ninetales who apparently has an ice form, and then she pulled out an Aurorus who looks strangely familiar. But then I realized that it was the evolved form of the little blue dinosaur I revived back home. This guy was super strong as well. One meteor beam and he knocked out my Charizard. My Buzzwall was able to knock him out and do some damage to this cloister, but ended up falling, leaving Greninja to die as well. I battled her again and came up with a plan this time. Greninja was able to do massive damage with Hydro Pump on the Ninetales without dying. If I then used Water Shuriken, I would be guaranteed to attack first, taking out the rest of its HP. When she pulled out the Cloister, I brought out Charizard to spew flames on it because I knew he could one-shot. Charizard did some damage to the Aurorus, making it easier for Buzzwall to take him down with his superpower. And just like that, I defeated the Ice Gym, which I was really proud of. I battled the NPC tester for fun, and I got to see the mega form of Blaziken, which was cool, but I only saw him for a couple of seconds after a hydro pump. Now, the next gym was the poison gym, and it definitely had an interesting style. I liked how much purple they used to really symbolize the poison. No, but seriously, there was an insane amount of purple just everywhere. There were tons of aliens, and the water was even purple glass. Anyway, I took on the NPC, and he of course had a Venusaur. Venusaur is one of the best competitive poison types, especially when he's Mega Evolved, so I knew this battle would be tough. He switched out the Venusaur since it couldn't do much damage to Buzzwool, and then he brought it back out against Greninja. When I battled him again, I realized that I actually had the best trio to counter his lineup. I put Charizard against Venusaur since Fire Beats Grass. I put Greninja against Nidoking since Water Beats Ground. And I put Buzzwool against Drapion since Fighting Beats Dark types. And just like that, I easily won the battle. Now the next gym I'm about to show you will probably be the coolest and most amazing thing you'll ever see in Pixelmon. I went to the Psychic Gym and I took a look around to see an Alakazam with spoons spinning around him, a Mewtwo wearing a suit and sunglasses looking like he worked for the Secret Service, a Mega Mewtwo Y and a Mega Mewtwo X who seemed like they were in battle, another agent, and a Metagross who kind of looked like a penguin. I took on the gym manager first to see what he had and he whooped out a muck that looked like he had a bunch of paint splashed onto him. He next brought out a Pokemon that literally lived up to its name, and then an Aegislash who I believe is the final evolution of that floating sword I talked about earlier. I got whooped by the manager so I thought it'd be a good idea to take on the gym leader. I was able to take down their starter but then the slowbro came into the picture with his mega evolution and took down my team. I challenge him again and Greninja gets destroyed by the first Pokemon, but then Buzzwole comes in to save the day. He brings out a Metagross to finish off Buzzwole, which left Charizard to handle the rest. He switched out Metagross for his Slowbro since he wanted a water type against Charizard, but Charizard kept making him flinch with air slashes, bringing him down without even losing a single health point. The Metagross was the last Pokemon, and I wasn't really sure how this fight would go, but Charizard stood his ground and with one flamethrower, he beat the Steel Crab. I was so proud that my Charizard clutched up for the first time. It was time to say goodbye to the Psychic Gym and say hello to the Rock Gym. 
As per usual, I checked out the place, and as per usual, I found some really awesome Pokemon. Although, there's usually three unique Pokemon in their own location, and I couldn't find the third one. It took some time, but I realized it was the crystal-shaped Pokemon on top of the light post, which I thought was an interesting idea. When I took on the NPC, I put Charizard first up to bat and was greeted by this cute and friendly looking Aerodactyl. But little did I know that this dude would turn into a terrifying monster that wipes out my entire team solo. However, in the next battle, this guy made a mistake at the start by switching out Cradley for Aerodactyl, allowing Buzzwold to attack first and kill it. When I pulled out Greninja, he immediately withdrew his Tyrantrum to counter my water type with Grass, but then I countered Grass with Bug, taking him down instantly. All he had left was Tyrantrum, and for him, I brought out Greninja again. I was confident that I would win, but Greninja kept missing Hydro Pump, and if he died, I would have been screwed. But luckily, the Hydro Pump ended up hitting, and I was victorious. That was definitely a close one. Alright, enough playing with rocks, it's time to take on the Steel Gym. Even though this gym was extremely small, it definitely had the space to display some really sick Pokemon. I was tempted to climb the anvil in the middle, but then I saw this in the corner of my eye, which I just had to check out. I could not believe that was Aggron's mega form. I really wanted one of these now. Wouldn't it be awesome to find this thing in the wild? That's probably not a good idea, but I know I wouldn't complain. Now on to the gym leader. I didn't have any hard counters to Empoleon, so I just used my water type to duke it out, and he came on top. Greninja then pumped some water onto the Bronzong, and killed it with 1 HP left. But as expected, the leader saved his best for last, which was the shiny Mega Evolved Metagross. I was able to do a lot of damage to it with Greninja before he died, but he one-shot my Buzzwall with just a sliver of HP left. I tried again, and luckily, Greninja dished out 5 shuriken attacks on the Bronzong with only 6 HP left. As for the Empoleon, I took him down instantly with Buzzwall's superpower. And last but not least, I used Charizard's Flare Blitz to burn the Metagross, putting an end to him with one last Air Slash. Every single one of my Pokemon did amazing in that fight. After Steel came Water, and I already had doubts my team would do well here. Also, this was by far the biggest gym I've seen yet, and probably the most well designed. I explored for a little bit and found an angry looking serpent, a massive orca, and whatever that thing is. Now as I mentioned before, I wasn't comfortable with my team fighting water types, so I figured I'd bring my grass types back into the party. I also wanted to max my deciduous EVs and levels, so I came back to this lovely place. I cannot stress how helpful this place has been. After a few minutes and a bunch of left clicking, I easily got him to level 100. As a result, EV training became 10 times easier since he killed Pokemon faster. For Obama Snow, I retaught him Woodhammer so that he can do some really good damage to the water types. I came back to the gym feeling more than ready. I took out a Seismitoad with just one Leaf Storm. Then, I hit his Galissapod with an extra sensory, and he withdrew it for Pelipper. It was a good thing that Greninja was super speedy and hit three extra sensory moves to take it down. All he had left was his Galissapod, but just in case, I Mega Evolved my Bama Snow, and with one Ice Punch, I brought his last Pokemon down, and claimed victory over the Water Gym. I had very high doubts, but I was thankful that this guy gave me the win. Moving forward, I was going to take on the Fairy Gym. Given my harsh experiences with the previous one, I made sure to be prepared this time and look for some counters. The counters to fairy types are Steel and Poison, which is why I picked Shield On and Spinarak for my team. As I leveled up Shield On, Spinarak leveled up as well with the EXP share and evolved into Ariados, while Shield On evolved into Bastiodon. I then checked my gym rewards and found that I had a lot of rare candies and money to claim. I earned a ton of rare candies, so I might as well just feed them to these guys. I gave enough candies to max out Bastiodon, but something told me that he wanted more. Anyway, I really hope that these two would succeed in battle. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that I'm using these guys instead of legendaries because the gyms here banned them for being OP. Now, I am totally okay with that because I would honestly get bored 1v3ing each gym with Arceus. In other news, I went straight into the gym battle and was challenged by a Mimikyu at the start, who I was able to poison. My Ariados may not be the strongest of attackers, but he did go down taking the first Pokemon with him, which was more than enough. After that, he sent out his Mawile, so I sent out Bastiodon to counter, but then he switched it out again. And I made the biggest mistake here by using Iron Head instead of Metal Burst, which would have instantly killed him. But luckily, my Charizard took care of my mistake. Now it was him versus Mawile, and the Mawile was Mega Evolving. 
I do apologize that I can't actually show it since Pixelmon has a bug that sometimes prevents you from moving your camera, but regardless, I did end up winning with 1 HP left on my Charizard. Leave it to Charizard to clutch up once again. Later on, I look through the gym menu to see which gyms have yet to be defeated and it looked like I just had a few left. I decided to travel to the dark gym and there really wasn't much here except for the gym leader. As I knocked out his starter, my Charizard died in 2 seconds when his Crocodile appeared. However, my Buzzwall didn't care about his damage and took him out with ease while being on fire. As he burned, he also took down the Sharpedo and won the battle. That was definitely the fastest gym battle I ever had. Meanwhile, I tried finding cool stuff in this place, but I couldn't see anything. I guess the gym really lives up to its name. Now, as I headed to the dragon gym, I expected there to be a lot of flying dragons, and I was correct. I was also very stunned. Seeing all these dragons in the air kind of made me regret hyping up the psychic gym so much. Right after those cinematic shots, I found the gym leader chilling by a dragon cave, and I was curious to see what he had. And as soon as I saw Dragonite, I knew I was done for. If you don't already know, Dragonite is one of the top 10 strongest non-legendary Pokemon in the entire Pokemon universe. Which is why I'm not surprised when he took out my team by himself. Soon, I came back home to think of a plan. I didn't even want to imagine how strong his other Pokemon must be. As I theorycrafted, I found an epic boss in the daytime. Fighting it was a disaster. I forgot that Tyranitar is also on that top 10 list. Plus, it was in its mega form. It got Greninja down to 8 HP, but I was super lucky to beat it with a single Hydro Pump. It also gave me some pretty awesome items upon death. Now back to my situation, I wanted to use a Fairy type to counter the dragons, so I figured I'd use the one Fairy Pokemon I had in my PC. Fun fact, I got this Pokemon from a Shiny Crate before the update, and I never mentioned it because I didn't think I'd ever need it for anything. And here I am, feeding it all my rare candies, preparing it to fight a bunch of dragons. But yeah, I have really high hopes for this guy, and I'm confident he'll do well. I take back everything I said. It was wrong of me to think that fairies counter dragons because dragons die in fairy tales. And now my team won't even look at me for being so stupid. However, I am confident that this team will do well. And I was glad to be right. Obamasnow took down the Dragonite with Blizzard and helped take down a Duraludon with his Hail Effect, while Bastiodon constantly metal bursted the Naganadel, earning me the win. It was insanely close, but I somehow did it. Moving on to the Electric Gym, I was just amazed at how big and beautiful the gym building was. I also got to see this cool looking cat, a Raikou, and this guy up here that kind of reminded me of Regice. After looking at those, I was a little terrified for the battle. The first two Pokemon were pretty normal, just a Rotom and an Ampharos, but the last one he sent out was a Golem, which was pretty shocking to see at first, but then I realized he was in a different form. When I came out of the gym, a Venusaur spawned close by. I really wanted to fight it since boss fights are so fun, but unfortunately, I couldn't. It honestly just breaks my heart to see it so alive and well. Anyway, it was time to move on to the fire gym, and this place was pretty much exactly what I expected, but with more lava than fire. I was glad to see the Pokemon I ditched for Charizard, a Victini, and the scariest bird I've seen in this game. When I battled the NPC, I thought I'd be able to beat him quite easily with just Greninja, but then his Charizard killed Greninja in one hit. So for the next battle, I tried to strategize a bit. When this Blaziken hit my Bastiodon, I would use Metal Burst to get him to 1 HP. Next, I'd take out Greninja to finish him off with a Water Shuriken. Then I'd use another Water Shuriken to take out the Cinderance. And finally, I would use as many Water Shurikens as I could to weaken the Charizard so that Obamasnow could finish him with a Blizzard, making my plan a success. Next stop was the Ghost Gym, and I took a step inside the gym's haunted house. I thought this was a really unique idea for a gym. This place had all sorts of spooky stuff in here. It even had the chandelier that didn't even move. Now the gym leader had a Sableye who transformed, and I had a feeling that this guy would be tricky to deal with. I brought out the big guns for him, and no matter how many attacks I hit him with, he just refused to fall. He then sent out his Gengar, who killed my last two Pokemon super easily. For the next battle, I brought Charizard this time, who was a great solution for Gengar, and even burned him to death. He also had a Mimikyu, who Obamasnow was able to handle, but had also died as well. That left Greninja against Sableye, and it was really hard for him to deal any damage to Sableye for the majority of the battle. But one Hydro Pump was all it took to finish him. It always feels so good to have each Pokemon do their part in battle. 
Now it's come to the point where I have defeated every single gym except for the normal gym. Even though it's just normal types, I have a feeling this is going to be the hardest gym. This place was a massive village that even had its own town hall. Just by the design alone, I have to say that this is my favorite gym, and I was pretty excited for the NPC battle. I had a lot of fun just touring this whole town and seeing what it had to offer. I soon entered the huge town hall where the NPC was and I initiated the battle. His first Pokemon took out Greninja like he was nothing. My Charizard was able to do some damage on his second, but the low Pony ended up killing him which left Abomasnow to handle this bunny and the rest of his Pokemon. He was able to take down the bunny, but then the Porygon ended him. I might have not done so hot in the first battle, but maybe I'll do better in the second one. And then I realized my Greninja is useless here. I came back with a new team, and my Bastiodon took down the Star Raptor, which was some good progress. But it was hard for my team to take out the rest of his Pokemon. I put Buzzwall on the team so he could help, and he did, but it wasn't enough. I kept battling this guy multiple times and I kept trying new things, but I was never able to pull through. It got so bad to the point where I would forfeit battles whenever he sent out a Pokemon that didn't match well with my starter. I went back home to find a fighting type to counter his Pokemon, but I didn't actually have any besides Buzzwool. That's when I decided to go on the hunt to find one. I settled for Machop and I fed him one rare candy to evolve him into Machoke. And right after I did, I found this ultimate boss that spawned near my house. And man did this guy look awesome. If I wanted to beat the Steelix, I needed the boys back on my team, because I knew that this guy would be level 150. He was extremely strong, and my Arceus practically did nothing to him, which got me super worried. However, my Obamasnow was able to do massive damage against it, and was really putting in the work. After he fainted, Bashiodon took care of the rest, and I completed my first goal of defeating an ultimate boss. I also got some sick items, as expected from an ultimate. Later, I bought and placed a trading machine down and asked this guy if he could come trade with me. This was the same guy I fooled earlier about the super crate, so I hoped he didn't remember. Now that was a long time ago, so he probably won't, but there's still a chance he might steal my Machamp. He agreed to trade, and he was going to trade a mushroom named Among Us, which made me think that he was trolling me, but maybe I was just being pessimistic. And it turns out, he traded it back, so I of course thanked him. While he was here, I thought it was the perfect opportunity for me to flex my Pokemon in front of someone. He asked me if I wanted to see his team, and I was really afraid that he would embarrass me. When I saw Zacian, I was impressed, but wasn't really intrigued by his other Pokemon. However, he did have a pretty well-rounded team, so I made sure to tell him that in chat. He then asked me if my Arceus could open a wormhole. I figured since he helped me out, I should return the favor. And I kid you not, I spent a good minute or two laughing like a maniac, watching this guy try to get into the hole, but failing miserably. I mean, it seriously can't be that hard, right? I was having so much fun watching him fail, that this other guy got mad at me for not responding to his question. Meanwhile, as this guy lit up fireworks near my property, I found another ultimate boss nearby, and this guy felt like he was 5 times stronger than the Steelix. Not a single one of my Pokemon were able to get a hit in except for Arceus. I tried again and again, but nothing seemed to be working. I battled it so many times that it became nightfall and all these bats spawned around us. I decided to battle it one more time and I came up with a plan of action. I'd use Water Shuriken since it attacks first and will deal a lot of damage. I would then use Future Sight on Arceus because I know that will do damage even if he dies. Next, I'd send out Entei who has extreme speed, a move that always attacks first. Then, I'll send out Obamasnow who will have the hail effect even if he can't attack. And finally, I have Buzzwool, who's actually able to take a hit and is capable of finishing him. And voila, the boss is defeated without even breaking a sweat. Mission accomplished. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to show you something. Remember when I beat the old fairy gym? When I defeated the gym, I got the badge and a pixie plate, which I can put on Arceus to turn him into a fairy type. I wish I had the other plates to test out because this is so cool. Anyway, back to the real mission, I still needed to level up my Machamp to the max to get him prepared for his fight. It's not an easy gym, so I have to train hard for it. After maxing out EVs, I headed to the gym and felt that this time I'd finally beat it. I threw my ball at him and the battle began. First I had to deal with his Mega Evolved Lopunny who did quite a bit of damage to Buzzwool but he still one shot it. But surprisingly, Buzzwool somehow managed to live through a Porygon attack while taking it down with one hit as well. 
This left me absolutely speechless because now that just left the Star Raptor who Bashiodon could easily defeat, meaning my Machamp was never needed after all, and all the training I went through with him was for nothing. I finally defeated the normal gym, but I was very much triggered afterwards. I couldn't believe that after all this time of battling the leader over and over, my Buzzwole decided that now would be the time to flex his strength and take out two Pokemon by himself. I think he wanted to prove that he was the only one allowed to flex his biceps on the team. On the other hand, I was able to complete my second goal of defeating all 18 gyms. To celebrate, I caught an Absol with a Master Ball. Now it's time to take on James from the Battle Frontier. As for the team that I would take to the final battle, I figured that all 6 of these guys have earned their spot since they've proven to be the most useful throughout this entire journey. I teleported to the Battle Frontier and I initiated the last battle of these 100 days. He sent out Groudon first which I easily countered with Bashiodon and then he sent Arceus in his ghost form which I was terrified yet excited to see. I put Buzzwall up against Arceus and countered his Shadow Force, getting him super low. I tried to use Lunge on him, but he kept avoiding it, and he killed Buzzwall. I brought Greninja out to finish the job, but he switched Arceus out for Shuckle. I threw multiple shurikens at him, and the poor thing wasn't able to do even the slightest bit of damage to Greninja. He then brought out Darmanitan, a Pokemon I'd never seen before, so I had no idea what to do against it, and it apparently destroyed Greninja in one hit. Next, he pulled Arceus back in, so I pulled out Obama Snow and evolved him into a scary Yeti form. I flexed on him pretty hard, and he wasn't having it. He withdrew Arceus for Necrozma and transformed it into its ultimate form, just to outflex me. That thing may look like an absolute beast, but it's nowhere near as strong as my Obama Snow, who ended up killing it, as well as the Arceus with its tail effect. I wanted to save my Arceus for last, so I sent out Charizard against his Mewtwo. It evolved into its Mega Form and took out Charizard in one hit. That just left Arceus to handle the rest, and he actually crushed the Mewtwo with a couple of extreme speeds. Now it was just him versus Darmanitan, and he got so close to death, but I kept healing him. He even got down to 1 HP, but there was no way I would let him fall, so I continued to heal him over and over again. I wanted to give him a proper fighting chance. When he almost got to full, I then used extreme speed and did massive damage on this guy. I used one more extreme speed, finally beating him and completing my third goal in this Pixelmon world. And I couldn't have been happier. I had so much fun on this server, so I'll definitely be playing more this week. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the support you leave on this video, and I will see you next time.